Hey guys, it's Taylor. I am here with another video for you today. And today we will be looking at Adobe Illustrator. So I'm going to go ahead and let that open up. And hopefully I don't get asked about a um, update from Microsoft, but if that pops up, I'm sorry. I hope it won't. Do do do, open any day. Okay, welcome to Adobe Illustrator. This is what it's going to look like when you first open it. At least it does for me. I will show you the other screen for when you first open it. For some versions, I think maybe with the newer versions, you only see this, but it's not complicated to work with. It is actually fairly simple. So you can see the pieces that I've done and from here to here sorry from this one to this one you can just see the growth from looking at the icons so obviously you can open an old project or you can create a new project and I'm going to click create new this is what some screens in Adobe Illustrator will look like when you first open the software in general. Um, it does not give me this option. It gives me these down here, but that's okay. You can make something for a mobile device, and it even gives you the um, surfaces or whatever they're called. I can do something for web. I've never messed with that one before, so I'm not going to bother. Then you have print, so this is if you want to make like a portrait or something like that. Because you have, okay, the A4, B4, all of these are European. So you'd have to look it up and see um, what those would be in the U.S. And then obviously we have letter and legal film and video, never used it before, but I primarily use art and illustration. I think you can probably see why. Um, I'm just going to use, hopefully, something relatively small, but I'll just stick with the posters. I'm just showing you simple uh, tools today and the ones that I use. So over here you can do a fixed width and height. And if you click the drop down menu, you can use points, picas, inches, millimeters, centimeters, or pixels. I use inches whenever I'm setting up a document. For me, that's just easier than um, some of these because that's whenever I start to get confused. We're not going to worry about bleed for now, but a bleed is very handy when you are setting up a document, especially if you're going to have it sent to a printer. But like I said, we'll get into that later. Your color mode you can change. You only have two color modes. In Illustrator, I think you have a few more in Photoshop. But we're not going to worry about Photoshop today. So RGB is red, green, and blue. And CMYK is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. We're going to work in RGB. It is the entire color scheme. CMYK is a bit more controlled. I'm going to go ahead and click Create. So 18 by 24. Obviously, that's a big... This is your artboard. The giant white board is your art board. This is just to the side, but it comes in handy. It really, really does. I use this a lot, this area, the gray space, a lot for my bigger projects, simply because you can put stuff over to the side, and then it doesn't interfere with what you're working with over here. So I'm going to show you the tools that I use. Um, I don't use a whole bunch of them, 
but I think I use a fair amount of tools. Uh, so if I quickly scan over one, it's one I don't use. So the selection tool, that's currently what I have active. You can tell if a tool is active because it will have a dark gray box behind it. If it doesn't, it's not active. The direct selection tool that is primarily used in correspondent with the pen tool. And at some point I will show you that. The pen tool, that's kind of become my friend and it sort of hasn't. It's an odd tool. I will go ahead and tell you that. The magic wand tool, type tool, line segment, rectangle, and with any of these tools that you see, any of them, not just the ones I'm pointing at, but any of the tools over here that have a little arrow, you can just click on it. I have to hold and click, but you get a whole bunch of different options. See these? You have the rectangle, and then you have a few other options. That's just a way to make space more convenient in your toolbar your paintbrush tool, eraser tool, I think that should be fairly obvious. Do, do, do. Rotate, scale, I probably use the scale more than I think I do. Ray transform, it sounds like I use that. Mesh tool, gradient, the gradient is my absolute favorite. Eyedropper tool, and I can show you some fun ways to use the eyedropper tool especially when you're trying to get different colors for things that is a great tool to use your blend tool it's a little tricky even I'm still trying to figure out how to use it properly artboard don't worry about this until you have to do projects with more than one artboard the hand tool and your zoom tool this is so this is your tool tool panel sorry guys uh, down here you have fill and stroke and then you can swap them and down here so let's say you have your fill turned on and you want a gradient you can click down here and now you can see that it went from blank white to a gradient fades from one color to the other or you can have none at all and you can tell when you have no fill turned on because you'll get that red line going through the box. And as you can see over here in my panel, I'm not quite sure what panel in general this is called, but you can see that the gradient is now active as well. But you can't apply a gradient until you have something in your art and now you have your colors your color guide never use this but it looks pretty legit like I'm not even kidding that looks freaking legit brushes symbols your strokes so you can change the width and I'll show you later how you can really change it you can change it to be dotted or other fun stuff Gradient, you've already seen this one. Do, do, do. Appearance panel, this one is really, really good to use. And a lot of people don't seem to use it. I don't know why, but it's a really good one to use. And of course, your layers panel. You want to keep, I keep the layers panel open at all times. That way, it is easily accessible. And when you're doing a multi-layer project, I just did seven layers to show you. Let's say each layer had something on it. You want to name each layer. And I don't care if like this is background, and then you have block one, black. You know, just give yourself an idea of what each layer is because I promise you whenever you get into really big numbers in your layer panel it is much easier just to go ahead and name them all 
instead of trying to go back through and select each one and find the layer you're looking for, it will save you a lot of time. Now let's say this block one I wanted to lock so you couldn't move it around. Right here, toggles lock. And right beside the eyeball, you can, you can lock a layer. So there was something on this layer. I can't, um, move it. So let me show you what I mean. And I hit the M key, and that is the shortcut key. So when you make a shape, press down with your mouse or your keypad, and hold down shift. And you will get a proportion size um, object. You can center it on your artboard. When it is centered, it will tell you, see the pink lettering where it says center? That means it is centered on your artboard. So everything around it is where it should be. Now watch what happens whenever I press the lock. See? I can't even select it, no matter what I do. So that ensures that whatever you're working on won't move. And I'm going to change the opacity, and that is up here, to around 50 because that dark black, well you got to make sure it's selected first. That always helps. So whenever you're going to change the opacity or add a gradient or anything like that, always make sure your uh, object is selected. Now I'm changing that to 50 and lock. So now it can't move and we can't select it. Let's see, what else can I show you? The text tool, obvious type tool, text, whatever. That the the shortcut key is T, and see how I have a little pencil in a circle? I can't use this layer because it's locked. So we're going to go here, and I'm going to name this one Welcome. And now you can either just click in Illustrator and start typing. And I will make that big enough so you can see it. Or with your type tool, you can come here, make sure you click away from the one you just typed, and then you can click and drag a text box, a text box as big as you would like it. And then that is Laurel Ipsum it is filler text. So let's say you're doing something in Illustrator like cover art for a book and you want to put like the plot on the back or something, lorem ipsum is a great way to start. So that way you can have filler text, you can adjust the size, you can change the font. And for the love of God, please do not use Myriad Pro or any default text. We see it all the time. And we can tell when you use the default, so please do not do that. I'm going to go ahead and go with Montserrat. And whenever I click down, you can see it has all these different um, font families. And you can see as I go over it that it changes with it. And I'm going to leave it at medium. It's not really bold but it's not just regular text like this one up here. You can obviously see that a bit better. And this little red box, all it means over here is that your text is overflowing, which is fine. We're not worrying about that in this one. So let's say we want to move the welcome to up here. I was trying to center it, but apparently not and you want to change the shape of it a little bit, you can click right here where it says make envelope and you can have it make an arc, it can go up or down, an arch, 
You have all these fun things to work with. And I like either the flag or the wave. I'll stick with the wave for now. You can change how far it bends, the horizontal and the vertical. But ones like these, I tend to leave at their default. And you don't have to use this right here, that's the slider. You can type in your percentage. But you always want to make sure preview is turned on for whatever you're doing. Because then you can view what's going to show up before you click OK. And that comes in handy quite often when you're working with a big project. Okay, so I'm going to unlock the gray square, but I'm going to lock all the text. So now we can't move the text, but we can mess with the box. So right now it's got a white stroke, and all I did to get in the stroke in front of the fill was simply click on the stroke. I'm going to change the stroke to a different color. Let's go ahead and use a dark red. I'm going to change the point size. The reason I have points for text and um, stroke sizes is because I'm used to working with them, so I know what to expect. Otherwise, I probably would not. And I'm going to change it to a five point, and I'm going to change the opacity back to 100. That stroke isn't showing up. You want to play with the stroke until you get it to the right size. And I did 16 points. That is not a bad size at all because obviously you can see it. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. You can click with the mouse where you can hold your mouse down and it'll zoom in. And I'm doing this so you can see what this button right here, your stroke panel, does better than if I was zoomed out. So go ahead and click on the stroke right by the point sizes. You can change the point size. You can put in your own. You can have it have rounded corners. I'm not sure why I didn't particularly show that. Or you can do projecting I'm still not sure but we'll leave it oh that's why you gotta change the corner sorry round it and then that'll cap it off so see now it's a much more pleasing stroke stroke it's not real harsh you can have it in a dashed line not quite sure I like that but you can change how it looks you can put a gap I'm going to put a gap of two didn't do anything um, for me, but that's okay. I don't particularly like the dashed lines anyway, but you can use them. You can have arrows. Some of those are pretty cool. Uh, arrows on both sides, or you can have one of these things, whatever they are. They're just a different version of a stroke. But I'm going to leave mine like this because I like that rounded edge instead of um, the other one that we had. And then to zoom out, you press Z or you can press the actual tool. And zoom out is option. And you can just drag your mouse and you'll zoom out. And I'll leave it zoomed in a little bit so you guys can see. Uh, it, this is still active, so if I wanted to do something there, I could, but I'm not. I'm going to lock it. And up here in your window, this is where you can get a bunch of other stuff as well. Uh, stroke. And when you click on any of these, it will open it for you. So let's say you want to look at swatches. There's my swatch panel. You can click on 
while that was active, you could click on it, you can change the colors, you can do a lot, and that's just your swatch panel. It doesn't look like it's saved any of the ones that I've used in previous projects, and that's okay. But that's your swatch panel, your appearance panel, artboards, brushes, color. I might have to use the color guy, because like I said, that looks crazy awesome. Image trace, that's not one I use very often. I might just to show you. But yeah, I think that's pretty much everything. Oh, right. If you click on Illustrator CC, and that's Creative Cloud, you can get good deals. I have Creative Cloud because I'm a student. Anyway, you can go ahead and press that, and you can open your preferences. And you have all these different preference, preferences over here. So you can totally come in here and change a bunch of stuff, like seeing my units. I can change it if I want to. I'm not going to. But you can change... Um, what stuff looks like for you, even the interface color if you prefer white or light, dark. I don't think mine was that dark. No, that's the one I had. I'm good. Um, so yeah, you can change this kind of stuff and make it how you want it. And rich black is what you want. Um, you do not want to use a really dark black in books or even like from my box here. That's really hard on the eyes, especially with the red that's contrasting with it. But especially in books, you want to use, um, a slight difference. I will show you that real quick, then I'll wrap up this video. So let's say the black, so I'm going to click on the fill, is not what I want. But as you can see right here in my color swatches, you have black to white, okay? I never use the black that's 000 or white that's 242. I never use those. I use everything in between. That is because these are softer colors and they are easier on the eyes. So you'll be able to see what I mean. That is a bit easier for me. I mean, it's going to be trickier with red, but you can see what I mean. You can mess with this to your heart's content. And there's surely going to be something because there's just got to be. I'm going to change it back to the second one there. But you want to be careful about using rich, this kind of white, whoops, select it, this kind of white, and this kind of black. And I've learned that because there are people where that would really hurt their eyes, and you, you want to be conscious of your audience, whether it be a graphic, that's simple as this, and even that is hurting my eyes. Or someone who has bad vision, you do not want to have something that's real hard on the eyes. And I will go through that in another video about colors that work well together and ones that don't. And a good way to look at colors that work together especially are football or any big sporting team because they have colors that complement each other well like the Dallas Cowboys is um, blue and white and they look good together a good one would be Bronco colors which is orange and blue and they're complementary colors and especially football teams use complementary colors because it's easier for the players and it's easier for their fans. So I've covered 
pretty much everything on the natural interface for Illustrator. You can change this around too to fit what you're doing. I've learned Essentials is pretty good for almost everything. If you're going to paint, certainly press painting. But that's all I have for you today. And um, I will see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.